Hey guys and welcome to a brand new video here on FBL Now. Today we're going to be going over some potential wildcard drafts for game week 31. So if you're excited for the video, drop a like down below. Leave a comment that you're thinking of playing your wildcard this week. Subscribe if you're brand new and let's get into the video. So, starting things off, this video is going to be split into two different sections. The first section is going to be going over a potential wildcard draft. Uh, if you do not have your free hit left, that you probably would be playing in 34. And then the second part of the video is going to be going over a potential wildcard draft. If you do have your free hit left, that you would be playing in 34. So, let's go over the draft if you do not have your free hit. So in goal, we do have Raya and Petrovic, uh, a really nice goalkeeper combination, a little bit more pricey because obviously Raya is 5 mil and Petrovic is 4.5, but they just alternate really, really nicely um, on the like back end of the season. Obviously, you'd play Raya this week, who's got Luton at home. You'd play Petrovic next week, who's got Sheffield United away. You'd probably play Petrovic again, who's got Everton at home. And then Raya doubles in 34. And then Petrovic is either going to be doubling in 35 or 36. And then Petrovic, of course, doubles in 37 as well. Well, so 35 is going to be a little bit annoying, especially if Petrovic doesn't double because you have to decide between Raya, who's got Spurs away, and then Petrovic, who's got Villa away. But then you should have some nice doubles coming up regardless. But either way, they just, like I say, alternate really, really well. And you shouldn't really have to worry about this again unless one of them picks up an injury. You know, Arsenal are not going to be playing Brentford again, I don't think. So you don't have to worry about Raya uh, not being able to play because obviously it's his parent club. And then Petrovic shouldn't really be losing his spot because, Re uh, because Sanchez is injured again even though Petrovic did have a bit of a blunder he still did play pretty well in that Chelsea Burnley game made some nice saves but yeah those would be the two goalkeepers I would go with if I did not have my free hit left for 34. At the back we've got Richards, Gabriel, Eight Nori, uh, Zabani and also Bradley as well so Richards is an absolute gem of an FPL pick at the moment uh, for Crystal Palace he's been playing 90 every single week and as well as that they do of course have a double coming up in 34 being West Ham at home and Newcastle at home They've got Bournemouth away this week, and then they've got City and Arsenal. Uh, they've got City and Liverpool, but you wouldn't be playing him against City or Liverpool anyway. Uh, and then, like I say, they've got a nice double in 34, and he's only 3.9 mil. So I think he's an absolute steal. Uh, gets you into that Crystal Palace defense, and as well as that, yeah, you don't even have to worry about money really because he's he's just so cheap. Uh, next up, we've got Gabriel, who's coming in at 5.3 mil. Obviously, Luton at home this week, doubles in 34, uh, and then apart from that. Yeah, I, I don't think Arsenal are going to keep a ton of clean sheets now. Like I, I think they they concede against Brighton. I think they concede against Villa. I think they concede against Spurs, um, and then maybe against Chelsea as well. You'd, you'd maybe like to think they'll keep one against Wolves or something, but. At the same time, you're going to need an Arsenal defender, especially for, for game week 34, because a lot of people are going to have him. So you're obviously doubling up on them here, uh, even though they might not be keeping that many clean sheets, but there's just not really enough funds to be able to bring in any other Arsenal players in midfield or up top. Because apart from like Havertz, maybe, and maybe Erdegaard, there's not really anybody else that I kind of really want to go with. Like Martinelli's minutes are a little bit over the, over the place. Trossard's is, Jesus's minutes. It's just a bit unfortunate. So apart from Saka, there's not really any other midfielders you really want. Uh, and then after that, we've got Eight Nori. I know that he came off early, um, but I, I think apparently he's fine. I think that was just fatigue. He came off on the 65th minute. Wolves have just got a really nice run of form as well. 100%. Burnley, West Ham, Forest, a double in 34, then Luton at home. Like, Wolves are just a really good team to target right now, especially if you do not have your three hit in 34 because you, you'll just... You don't have to worry about it. And a player like Eight Nori as well for 4.6, I think it's an absolute bargain. And he's going to definitely return quite a few points, I think, over the next few fixtures. Uh, moving on, we also have Zabani as well, Bournemouth defender. Uh, again, doubles in 34. Some also uh, pretty nice fixtures as well, either side of that double uh, with Crystal Palace at home, Luton away, Brighton at home. Man United at home is, you know, arguably a good fixture this season. Uh, and then, yeah, they've got the double in 34. And he's a sure starter in that Bournemouth defense. So uh, we've also got Bradley, who... Yes, does double in 34, but I think Trent will be back by then. I I don't think Bradley should lose a spot at all because he's been playing so, so well, but Trent comes back into the team. I think we can all agree on that. Bradley is ma mainly in this team for that Sheffield United at home fixture, um, which is obviously a fantastic fixture for a player like Bradley. He obviously played really, really well against Brighton, and this time you'd expect them to keep a clean sheet and potentially an attacking return from Bradley as well. He, he was linking up a lot with Salah, and so, you know, if you do bring in Salah this week and you captain him, you, you could be maybe getting an assist from Bradley or even vice versa as well. Bradley had a pretty good chance that Salah set up. Just going down that right flank, it's just a, a really nice kind of double up 
uh, for, for Liverpool. So that's kind of the back line. Again, I, I would probably get rid of Bradley closer to 34, but again, you can, you've got a couple of free transfers before then anyway. Um, so you can always just get rid of Bradley for that, especially if there's like an injury or something. We'll have to see what happens with Trent. You know, it might be the situation where Bradley keeps a spot and plays right back and then Trent maybe plays in midfield. You, you know, you don't really know. Uh, we'll just have to see what happens and what Klopp decides to do. But as of right now, I think he's a great fix, a great pick for that Sheffield United at home fixture. And that is the back line and the goalkeepers. Uh, in midfield, we've got Saka, Salah, Palmer, Luis Diaz and Son as well. So this is the, um, this is the midfield for, like I say, Double game week 34 mainly, and obviously, if you don't have a free hit, Sack is obviously in the team. Really good fixtures. Doubles in 34 uh, is fine. Like, he came off early against City, but that was just fatigue, so you don't have to worry about that. He should just be absolutely fine. Salah, I think, is just a no-brainer. Even if you're not on a wild card this week, you just have to bring him in. Like, Sheffield United at home he is ridiculous. He's going to be captained by everyone. The effective ownership is going to be insane, and I expect him to go big as well. Sheffield United is the worst team in the league this season, and they've conceded goals for fun and you know going up against Liverpool I don't think that Liverpool are going to step off the gas I think they're just going to go for them you know they're going to go for that jugular uh, Palmer also in this team as well should be doubling in 35 or 36 and then does double in 37 and again one of the best FPL assets to own this season regardless uh, Luis Diaz as well as another player that I, I really like the look of at the moment um, again his minutes are a little bit more up in the air um, and, and you can always drop him down to like an Eze or somebody like that if you did want to. But Palace do have City and Liverpool coming up. So I don't think you need to really like triple up on Palace at the moment. You can just bring him in in 34 if Diaz does kind of lose his place. Even though I don't think he will because Gakbo's been playing awful. Uh, Jota's still injured. Again, could be back around the same time as Trent. Obviously, Salah's going to keep his spot. But then Darwin Nunes, um, you know, is probably going to get rotated a little bit as well. So Diaz, like I say, is just playing really well at the moment. So I, I quite like him in the team. And his minutes have been really good as well. Like 88, 90, 90, 88, 90, 81, 90, 90. Like, I, I understand that's because of injuries and stuff in the squad. But, I mean, if I was a Liverpool fan, I'd rather want Diaz playing than Gakpo because the form is just clearly there at the moment. Uh, and then Sun also in this draft as well. Again, does blank in 34 but um, we'll be doubling in either 35 or 36. So I, I think it's it's just nice to just have him in the team regardless. Plus West Ham and Forest coming up and Newcastle away. And Newcastle are just fraught with injuries at the moment. So I, I don't mind having Sun against that fixture at all. And then up top, we've got Solanke, Haaland and Mateta as well. So again, you, you don't have to play Mateta at all, especially with the fixtures coming up like City and Liverpool. He's just there for bench fodder, does double in 34. And, you know, he's been playing a lot, really. Uh, his minutes look pretty nice at the moment. Has been scoring goals as well 90 80 80 uh, 90 80 90 90 90 90 like he's he's just playing loads and loads of football and i understand there's injuries around the palace uh front line as well but i, I don't think he loses his spot once he uh once those injuries are, are, are fine because he's like i say he's just been playing really well really really well uh and then ha obviously harlan's in the draft and then solanke as well uh it could be a darwin nunez um it could be a different striker that doubles in 34 but uh yeah solanke i just think is a really nice option i, I understand that darwin's got sheffield united at home this week but it's just his minutes, man. If he gets benched in that fixture, you're going to be a little bit annoyed. So this is kind of the wild card draft that I came up with. If you are not playing your free hit in 34, if you do not have your free hit, either way, um, it's got... How many doubles has it got? It's got Raya, uh, Richard, so that's two, three, four, five. Um, I'm not going to count Bradley because he's probably not going to be playing in that double. But we've got Saka, Salah, uh, Luis Diaz, and then also Mateta and Solanke. So you've got 10 doublers there. And then as well as that, before game week 34, you can always bring in a different player. You can always bring in somebody like Kuna as well for Wolves if he's fit, um, who obviously has some really nice fixtures coming up. Again, Huang would be a really, really nice option as well if he's fit, but um, we'll see what happens with that. But as of right now, I quite like this draft for a team that is not free hitting in 34. If we move over to the team that uh, you are free hitting in 34, obviously you don't have to worry about those players because you're just going to be bringing them all in regardless. You can concentrate on 35, 36, all the doubles in 37 and then of course the fixtures that are coming up uh in the in the kind of uh, immediate future as well so in goal we do have Anana and Petrovic uh they both double in 37 Petrovic should be doubling in 35 or 36 again we've already spoken about it in today's video but uh those are kind of the keepers that I'd be really aiming at uh on a, a wild card draft where you are playing in three hit in 34 at the back we've got Burn, Gusto, Gvardiol, Udogi and Bradley. So Bradley is obviously in this draft as well because we've just got such a nice fixture and he's only 4.2 mil. Uh, Udogi's in this draft because yes he does a blank in 34 but you don't have to worry about that because you're free hitting and then you've already got a Spurs place for 35 or 36. Gvardiol I think is an excellent FPL asset as of right now because he's back from injury, Ake's out, 
Walker's out. So straight off the bat, there's two big holes in that defense. I just don't see how Gvardiol doesn't play um, at all. Like Stones is hit or miss, but he can always play like a little bit forward as well in midfield. So I think that Gvardiol is just, yeah, I think he's just a great player to have. Because Pep also said that, you know, Walker and Ake are probably going to be out a little bit long, like longer than players like Stones and stuff. So yeah, I think it'd be silly to not have Gvardiol. Whether he's going to still be playing in like a definite... Um, spot in, in game week 37 is obviously yet to be seen, but they've got some really nice fixtures coming up. Palace, Luton, uh, Forest and stuff. So yeah, I, I really like Vardy as an option. Gusto is a little bit in the air still. Like he's um, still injured. We have to wait for a little bit more information. I've got 0.2 mil in the bank on this draft here. So you might have to kind of work that out um, and, and maybe bring in a different player if uh, Gusto is out because you kind of want that triple Chelsea for the doubles that they've come coming up after 34. So yeah, you'd have to think about that. I think he will be okay. Uh, the, the the kind of messages that are coming out is that it is like potentially um, could have been cramp. Some people are saying it's hamstring. We'll have to wait and see. But uh, yeah, as of right now, he's in this draft, but that could easily change. Also gone Dan Burn as well, just for the uh, fixture that Newcastle have. They also double in 37. Uh, I don't know what's going on with the Newcastle medical team because they are picking up injuries left, right and centre. But uh, Burn is probably going to be playing as centre-back now with maybe Livermento on the left. Livermento is still a bit of a doubt. If Livermento is fine and he's given like the all-clear and he's going to be like definitely playing, then now we'll go Livermento over Dan Burn just because you've got a bit more of a threat on the, on the wing and stuff. But obviously once Trippier is back and stuff, we'll see what happens. Although Dan Burn on corners and stuff is obviously... Um, uh, a nice player to have because he's the tallest player in the Premier League. So, yeah, that's kind of the uh, the back line there. And obviously, Bradley makes the squad as well because they've got Sheffield United at home this week. Uh, in midfield, it's pretty much as you were, but instead of Luis Diaz, you have Garnacho um, because obviously you can just free hit Luis Diaz if you want in 34. Garnacho is mainly in there just because they double in 37. They've got some nice fixtures after uh, 32 as well because they've got Bournemouth, Sheffield United, and Burnley. So, yeah, really, really nice fixtures for those. Um, and then the rest of them we've already spoken about. And then up top, we've got Solanke, Haaland, and Izak as well. So yeah, Solanke and Haaland's the same, but Izak is different from Mateta just simply because you don't need any Palace players if you're free-hitting in 34 because they've got awful fixtures in the immediate future, being City and Liverpool. And, you know, you've got Izak, who's on penalties and just a much better player to have. In the bank, yeah, 0 0.2. So you, you could change a couple of things. Like if Livermento's out uh, in and, and you want to go him over Burn, then obviously it saves you an extra 0.3. That gives you 0 0.5 in the bank if you've got the same transfer value as me. Uh, and then at that point, five can be used on anybody, really. But yeah, that's the kind of wild card draft I would probably go with if I was free hitting in 34. Like, I'm free hitting in 34, and I will make a free hit 34 draft and everything like that when it comes to it because I'm doing, I'm going to be playing my free hit. But this is very, very similar to what my wild card looks like. Anyway, as you can see, I've, it's going to cost me eight points if I was going to do this. I think the only difference from this for me is Burn, Gvardiol, and uh, Solanke as well. Because I think at the moment I've got Watkins, obviously the cells, and then I think I have, I've got another injury. Oh, it's Van Heck as well. So yeah, they're the differences that I would have. So uh, yeah, all in all, it's it's very similar to a game week 30 wildcard, but you, you don't have to worry about bringing in those players that are already injured. So those are the wildcard drafts that I've come up with for game week 31. If you enjoyed the video, please do drop a like down below. Uh, leave a comment. Are you thinking of wildcarding? Subscribe if you're brand new. And until next time, peace.